Now I'm sure many of you people that follow my channel have seen me use this air compressor time after time again. It's quite a few years old now. It's actually something that uh, I assembled with a bunch of junk laying around. You can see there's an old propane tank uh, that was used for the storage for the air. And I don't know where this stuff come from. It's just a bunch of stuff that was piecemealed together. Some of it I did buy. bought a valve, obviously. Uh, but for the most part, it's just a bunch of scrap that I put together. The air compressor has worked really well and I have used it over the years and I am very grateful for having this particular device. However, uh, now that it's winter time, I'm starting to get a lot of moisture into my lines, specifically as I'm using this guy here. So as I'm trying to de-rust things, I'm starting to spit some water at it, and then that just kind of makes the sand clump up, and it's just not any good. So I need a dryer, and I did a little research on dryers, and you can buy them. They're kind of expensive, but some people are using an oil cooler, and that's exactly what we're going to try. Now this is the oil cooler that I ended up with. I'll put a link down below on all the parts and pieces that I used in this particular video. I actually found this on Amazon. It wasn't really expensive, but I think it's going to be just fine for this particular air compressor to cool the lines down to make it condensate. Now at one point in a sad attempt to try to keep the moisture out, I added a water accumulator, a water separator. It's actually a filter water separator. And it just wasn't enough. I don't think there's enough time for the air to condense as it comes back around here. So adding a cooler before that I think is going to be the key. And then hopefully this will start catching more water and I won't be spitting water out the end of my line. Now obviously there's a lot of places where you could mount this particular cooler, but most people will mount them right behind this pulley here. And that is because it has a fan blade built into it and you get a lot of wind movement behind the pulley. Of course that air is designed to blow across the compressor head to keep it cool. Now in my situation, I have a way oversized motor. I think it's a five horsepower. Uh, you can touch this motor anytime and it's, it's pretty much cool all the time. So I'm gonna mount my air cooler in front of its fan right here and the reason is there's a lot of airflow in front of this fan and I really don't have a lot of airflow behind that pulley at least on my configuration of this compressor so it's going to get mounted here and I don't think that uh, it's going to affect the motor temperature at all because this, it's just so overkill for this again it was just a bunch of scrap and pieces that I put together to make a compressor and I ended up with a motor that was really too big I was able to find some U-channel scrap in my scrap bin. It's only about an inch wide, but it actually worked out pretty well. I welded it to the existing frame and put a couple of holes in it. I found some of these clips. They're basically like a zip tie. They're designed to hold an oil cooler to your radiator in your car. Uh, but I just took them through the holes in the U-channel and tightened them down. They worked out pretty well. It's actually pretty sturdy. Nothing's going to go anywhere. Plumbed everything in. There's a few design things that I do want to point out. So the first thing you're going to notice is the water debris filter is on this side of the check valve. So basically what that means is every time this does a decompress of the heads before its next cycle, it has to decompress all of the air in these coils and also in this bowl. It's not really that big of a deal. It takes about a second longer, but I purposely did this because I wanted everything on this side of the valve to be dry. So all of my gauges and my regulator and all the plumbing and the air going into the tank should have nice, dry, clean air. Now I also upgraded my gauges to liquid filled gauges that are of a decent size. The regulator specifically had a really small gauge and it was getting really hard to see. So nice clean gauges that have glass on the front so they don't scratch up and liquid filled which keeps the needle from bouncing under vibrations. Uh, they used to be really expensive but the prices went down considerably so I, I put a couple of those on there one on the tank pressure and one on the regulator pressure which also brings me to something else I've done is there is a port that goes right directly into the tank and there's a port that goes into the regulator and my reel has a whip line and I can just switch it back and forth if I want the tank pressure the full pressure or regulated pressure I can just switch them back and forth it's so kind of a dirty way to do that but it's going to work great for me one other thing I want to mention is years ago when I first built this I put one of these automatic drains on it basically every time the heads get um, you, you know the compression happens to decompress the heads it cycles a little a little valve in here and it releases about a teaspoon of air or water whatever's laying in the bottom of the tank these work really well i've read a lot of people that complain about them i have not had any issues with mine um i like it i'm going to keep it on there also if i can find one of those i'll i'll put a link down below as as well but they work really well i highly suggest it so you don't have water just laying in the bottom of your tank because if you're like me you'll forget to turn the valve open it up and 
let it drip out. So that takes care of that. And one other thing I also did is this is an auto drain on this uh, particular debris water filter as well. Because I'll probably forget and this thing would fill up and start spitting water out if I didn't do an auto drain. So little things that uh, make a difference if you're a little absent minded like me, they, they kind of go a long way. So overall the build was actually pretty easy. It was an easy modification to this. Um, I think it's going to work. It's going to last a long time and it should give nice dry air. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. You might find something you yourself might want to build.